All State Sports Link's third down chirp is delivered by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Visit papajohns.com today for more info. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Third Down Chirp delivered by Papa John's. I'm Kyle Binder and as always in studio, Pat Boylan and Chris Rankel as Ball State picks up their first road win of the season. It was Ohio's homecoming, but I'm still counting it as a homecoming one. I haven't seen one since 2008. Yeah, it's been three years. It's nice to, you know, maybe make the other people feel like, hey, this is what it feels to lose on homecoming. <laughs> well, guys, what I'm looking at is either they need to move the Ball State homecoming away from Schumann Stadium or make them play in the white jerseys because... I mean, we need a win on homecoming. <laughs> Whatever works, right? All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the victory on Saturday. Uh, Ball State hit on the road looking to end a two-game losing streak. No one scored in the first quarter. Uh, Cardinals and uh, Bobcats get off to very sluggish starts, but the Cardinals get on the board first with Steven Shot a 38-yard field goal just to start the second uh, quarter. But Ohio bounces back a trick play. 37-yard pass from Phil Bates, the wideout to LeVon Brazil. 37 yards for the touchdown, 7-3 Bobcats, but Juan Edwards back the other way. He takes this one up the middle, a 28-yard run as the Cardinals go back on top 10-7. To then after a Travis Freeman interception, the Cardinals have the ball back with 11 seconds, and Steven Schott will put one through the uprights coming up. A 25-yarder, good as gold in that very windy uh, day. He went 3-4 on the day as uh, the Cardinals... Trying to step it up in the second half, but the Bobcats not going away as Tettleton to Harden for the touchdown. And then the Cardinals, a special teams play here. They block the field goal. That's Jason Pinkston picking it up, trying to take it the distance. He has a bum hamstring, though, not at full speed, and the kicker, Matt Willow, runs him down. But nonetheless, the Cardinals get the ball back. Keith Winning takes it himself, a beautiful uh, read there on the quarterback option read, but then Ohio fighting back. Tettleton to LeVon Brazil, the one-handed snag, and he is gone. LeVon Brazil will take it 74 yards for the touchdown. It's all tied up at 20 apiece, and here comes Steven shot out for yet another field goal, and that one's right up the middle from 27 yards out. Nine of 13 on the season for him, and then the final field goal by Matt Weller is off to the left and no good. The Cardinals will get the ball back just to kneel it out as they are victorious on the road. Winning on homecoming improved to four and three as we take a look at the stats. A lot of good things for the Cardinals. And what really sticks out for me is Jawan Edwards, 123 yards uh, on 25 carries. Got that score. We're going to be talking about him a whole lot more here in this program. How about Keith Wenning getting back to uh, in some confidence? 20 of 36, 179 yards. Not real gaudy stats, but no interceptions. He's been fighting the turnover, by the way. Josh Howard had an interception and also a fumble recovery. Let's hear from him after the game. Oh, yeah, this is definitely a big game. Uh, us as players, we made it. We made it a, a point to make this as important as it was, um, especially after the past two big, past two losses. Uh, we lost pretty big. Um, we know that's not the type of team we are. So we knew that th this game would kind of be a statement game for us to uh, see what kind of players we were, see what we were as a team. Well, the freshman Juwan Edwards is pretty much the workhorse, the main workhorse now for the Cardinals. Uh, in this game, due to some injury these past couple of games, he's really taken the load. He has now over 500 yards on the season. Not bad for a guy who barely got recruited. Not bad at all. 123 yards another day, over 100 yards for Juwan Edwards. And you're absolutely right, Con. I think he's starting to solidify himself as the feature back in this Cardinal offense. 25 carries for Edwards on the day. Scott and Donegan, the two and three, uh, had nine with them total. So almost tripled the carries for Edwards as those two had combined. And Coach Skrosky, the offensive coordinator, he was joking. He was saying, I don't remember. It's few and far between the times I've given one back 25 carries in my offense. And to be just a freshman, Chris, I think that speaks a lot to where Juwan Edwards is right now. What I love about this kid is his attitude that he brings to the offense. When he goes down to carry, not one, not two, not three defenders, but four or five defenders are going to hit him before he goes down. And that, that attitude's contagious. You see it go to the offensive line. They dominated the Ohio defensive line. Uh, the, the running helped set up manageables. Third and manageable, second and manageable for Keith Wenning and the passing game. And that really uh, helps the offense overall. And Jawan Edwards, I saw several Ohio defenders celebrating after they got him down after a four-yard run. 
if the defense is celebrating after getting you down after four yards, you're doing something right. Oh, yeah. And the defense was also doing a lot of things right for the Cardinals, getting some turnovers. They had a much improved game. Uh, obviously, uh, Scott Cavanda helped them out. Bad field position for the Bobcats, but the Cardinals, turnovers and much more helped them on to this win. Well, the Cardinals were amongst the worst in the nation defensively in creating turnovers. Otherwise, they've done a pretty decent job on defense so far, but Coach Lembo had said he needs his playmakers to make plays, and he thinks that finally happened this week against Ohio, and I think he's absolutely right. Three turnovers, but it wasn't just the team best three turnovers on the season that was impressive about this performance by the defense. It was where they came in the game. One of those, a Travis Freeman interception right before half, stealing three points that the Cardinals really didn't even belong having and those three points hey they made the difference in the game later on as Ohio's going down to tie the football game a, a strip uh, of the running back and Howard able to pick up the fumble then Howard had a tipping interception later in the game it wasn't just the fact that they got three it was when they came and they were in huge points of this football game and this was really a total defensive performance everyone from the defensive line down to the defensive back everybody played a great game you saw backups stepping in for injured players they played well. Armand Dehaney had a couple key uh, tackles on some sweeps, but what Ball State did is they got Ohio out of their comfort zone. Ohio, not a team that likes to drive the ball down the field. They like to make the big plays. Ball State, to their credit, limited the big plays. A couple of uh, fluke plays like LeVon Brazil, one-handed catch for a touchdown. That's not going to happen every time, but Scott Cavanda, really a big part of this defense, pinning Ohio back behind their 10 three different times. Travis Freeman said he Cavanda gets his defensive play <laughs> Well, how big of a win is this one? When you look at it in the schedule, obviously the coaches and everyone's going to say you just take it one game at a time, but you're at the middle of the season, you're 3-3, three and three. this decides whether you go below 500 or not, and you're coming home. You only have two more home games. How big of a win is this? I don't think the coaches will tell you that before or after the game, but I think inside this is a big, maybe the biggest game of the season so far for the Cardinals. And Boy, that bit, uh, that win was important for him to get to four and three to stay above 500. And how about this for a stat? The Cardinals have not been below 500 at any point during this season through seven games. That's pretty impressive in itself. And also, it's Coach Lembo's first win on the road as an FBS coach. So a nice notch for him to get that number one there. And of course, the first of the season. But uh, you can't overlook the fact that it was Ohio's homecoming on a field that they win definitely more often than not in a tougher environment than you're used to. Uh, a lot of good things came out of uh, the weekend for Ball State. And they came against a very good team. A lot of people forget Ohio was really a pick to be a dark horse in the MAC this year. They were 4-1 and one going into this game. They got to a bowl game last year, so Ball State marched into their stadium, beat them on their homecoming game, and really sucked all the energy out of the place in doing so. And This is really a confidence booster. It keeps Ball State at the top of the MAC West. Uh, it's at a critical time of the year. That's the most important part. You look at the upcoming schedule. You have Central and Eastern Michigan in Western Michigan, and then at the end of the year, the Northern Illinois and Toledo back-to-back -back lurking. Ball State needs to get the wins they can right now, take care of business against these so-called inferior opponents because those two games at the end of the year, they're going to be tough. Yeah, this was one of the closest games of the weekend, but there still were a few other games. Let's check out some of those scores from around the MAC presented by Fox College Sports. You look at it first right there, Toledo and Bowling Green. Bowling Green may be much improved. Uh, from the beginning of the year where we thought they might be. Yeah, and I think a lot of this, Kyle, is the fact that this is a rivalry game, and a lot of times you see closer scores in rivalry games than you do. Uh, maybe you would have expected Toledo to win this one by more, but in Bowling Green in the rivalry game, not too shocked it was this close. And then the very next game, Buffalo Temple. Temple continues to roll. Uh, that defense is just very, very good. Temple firing on all cylinders right now, offensively, defensively, special teams. Y'all was looking really good. Then Eastern Michigan on top over Central Michigan. Eastern Michigan putting up some points there. A total shocker right after Central goes and beats Northern Illinois the week before. Central, or excuse me, Miami and uh, Kent State in a barn burner. Nine to three there. Two teams that are really struggling right now. Yeah, and two teams that uh, a lot of people thought would be pretty decent in the MAC this year, but struggling a lot. Miami very fortunate to get that win. And then Northern exploding over Western Michigan 51 to 22. I can't figure out any of these things. I thought Northern would win this game, but not by 29 points. The first real setback for the Broncos. Well, let's take a look at the uh, conference standings right now. Still early on in conference play, but 
Toledo up there at 3-0, but a big cluster there at 2-1 on the west side. Yeah, and all every team on the west side besides Central Michigan at 4-3 and three as well. Yeah, very odd, very odd how that, that worked out. And you look at the east side, Temple really pulling away. That that just shows how good the Owls are this year, and maybe their, their uh, win against uh, Ball State, not as bad as we thought. All right, time for a little true-false question here as we're a little past midway through the season. Keith Winning will have 10 interceptions or less, true or false? True. Less. He will have less. He'll have, uh, I think, less than 10. You look at it, he's had seven games so far, five interceptions. Just that in itself, uh, he's on pace to get under 10. Well, I'm going to say he's going to get right at 10. You know, he's been fighting the turnover bug the past couple games, and I don't think he's completely fought it away just yet. But let's not forget the fact, Chris, uh, five interceptions have come in two games, Oklahoma and Temple. Those are probably the two toughest defenses the Cardinals are going to face all year, and I don't think they have any that tough coming up on the schedule. But when you look at it, it's how he got those uh, interceptions. He really got rattled early, and that's a sign of a young quarterback. You get rattled, you get hit down a lot, you throw maybe a fluke interception, but I think a lot of teams that Ball State will face in the future, they're looking at that tape going, we rattle this kid, he's going to turn the ball over a lot more. You've seen them, the Cardinals play pretty much the toughest defenses in Oklahoma and Temple that they'll see uh, all year long. So I think it's a positive going forward that he's probably already faced the toughest uh, defenses. Well, this week we mic'd up yet another coach. This coach not only coaches the running backs, but also the special teams. It's time to meet Justin Lustig. Where's the corner? Corner, got it. Let's go. Eyes on the car. Let's go. You went one, two, and you just stop, right? Yeah. Stalk them. One, two, and, and keep going at them. You know what I mean? With short, choppy steps. My coaching right. philosophy is, is, you know, number one is playing with passion, playing with emotion. I think that's the number one thing. Let's go, jog back, jog back. Strip it out, strip it, strip it, strip it. Talk to the guys all the time about my, my two little boys and uh, how you can see their energy and how, how much energy they have when they're passionate about something compared to how much energy they have when they're not passionate about something. And it's, a, it's striking how different it is. If we take the boys to uh, the uh, amusement park, you know, they jump out of the car and they're running faster than I've ever seen them run. You know, when we go to church, not quite as fast, you know. So I think uh, playing with passion and emotion, you know, ups your energy level a little bit and just makes your physical effort that much better. Hey guys, remember, strip the ball for us, all right? Strip it, try to strip it. Running backs and street receivers, strip the ball. Take a short check step every time. Once you see the three hit it, you think the return is going inside, go. You think he's going outside, go. You can't be wrong. Well, it's just past uh, midterm time here at Ball State, so it's only fair that we get out the report card for Coach Lembo here in his first year. What do you guys give him four and three so far, a little over halfway through? I'm going to give him an A minus, and strictly uh, on the point that you look at the games they played so far, they've won all four of their toss up games, they've lost three tough ones. A minus for me. Got to go B minus. You know, this team is just really inconsistent. We know that's a young team. Coach Lumbo hasn't had enough time to install his, uh, his offense and defense, but B minus right now. I think you look at the fact that they already have four wins, the same amount as last year, on a tougher schedule, and they've only been favored in one of their games so far. They should be one and five, according uh, to the odds makers, to be four and three. I think that's about as good as you could expect from this Cardinal team. But, Pat, you look at how this Cardinal team has played. They have, it's like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. You have two different versions. You have the version that beats Army by uh, however many points it had, up 31 nothing at the half, and then you have the team that goes into South Florida and can't move the ball. It's, it's just a little too inconsistent for my liking. B minus, I stand by it. Tough grader there, Chris, aren't you? <laughs> Not the kind of professor I want. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a pretty easy question that both of you guys could probably answer. What has five fingers? I'm going to go hand. I that, can't think of anything so hand. Yeah, this is true, hand. But for students at Schumann Stadium on third down, a hand morphs into a fierce robin-sized bird. Tim Keene has more. I'm Tim Keem with Ball State Sports Link. Now we took a look at what makes the Ball State football team so unique, and we found the answer in the chirp. The chirp is just unique to Ball State because it gets everyone pumped up, and it's something that we can do here that no one else, no other school does. The chirp is what what gives that uh, extra momentum the team needs. An all-start in football season, the very first home game I went to, the first third down, I've been chirping ever since. I think it's a great thing that they've got going on. It's something that can uh, really get into the other team's head because, as uh, Dave Letterman says, the Cardinal is the fiercest robin-sized bird that there is out there. I'd be very afraid. Me too. It scares me every time she does it. <laughs> first, take your pointer finger and your thumb. Put them together. And get the rest of the fingers, perk them up, 
stiff perk. It's when the defense has a third down, and you got to go chirp it up. And it's chirp, 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 and then you start going crazy. I, uh, I think scholars believe that it was originated from Charlie Cardinal when he was trying to get the crowd pumped up at uh, one of his first football games and was trying to help them stop the opposing defense. So I think that's where the chirp started. Well, I believe it originated in 2004. Uh, Ball State was looking for something for a tradition. I know Purdue and IU all have something that they always chain on third down, like Purdue would do Boiler Up. So uh, our student section actually came up with that just so we had something that we could chant to be more of a traditional school. You know, it's just one of those famous stories. It's just, it, it, you sleep with it at night, you know? You really do. We're all chirping. We're all chirping. Yeah. It works every time. Whatever one's doing, of course. So, you gotta have, you gotta have full participation. So, Ball State, you better step it up. For Ball State Sports Life, I'm Tim Key. Well, clearly it also inspires show names as well. Ben Wagner got way too creative with third down chirp. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of that, what's chirping segment? Uh, remember, follow us on Twitter at third down chirp and uh, tweet a question at us each week about Ball State football. Have a chance to win a free Papa John's pizza this week. Our question comes from Will Stone 6. What are BSU's uh, bowl chances and what needs to happen? Well, I, I'd like to first point out the fact that it's nice that we're actually having this discussion. Yeah. To be four and three <laughs> yeah. and actually having this discussion is a nice thing. You know, I, I would say under 50%, uh, but I definitely think it's reachable. I, I agree it's definitely reachable. Now, it's not going to be easy to obtain by any stretch of the imagination. The MAC is just good from top to bottom this year. It absolutely is, but you look at the Central Michigan game coming up. You look at the Eastern Michigan game two weeks after that. I think those are must-wins. If you get both of those, then you get to six. That's bull eligible. It probably doesn't get you a bull in the MAC. I think uh, the key will be winning one of those other three games against Western, Northern Illinois, or Toledo. And I think the big thing is finishing fourth or better in the conference because you try to get that fifth bid, the MAC doesn't always have it. Yeah, and you look at uh, those upcoming games you just mentioned. Uh, Northern and Toledo look very, very good. So yeah. if they Indeed, Ball State does win against Eastern Michigan and Central Michigan. That Western Michigan game, circle it on your calendars. Bowl hopes uh, are on that game, and I think Ball State, they got a good chance to pull it off. You guys up for another road trip? I'm thinking Boise maybe on the bluegrass. Let's another do road it. Trip I love the <laughs> All right, well, the remaining games on the schedule are all Mac West opponents starting Saturday against Central Michigan. Right now, Central is the farthest south in the Mac West standings at 2-5. and five. But the film shows the Chippewas might be more dangerous than, than they look on paper. And they have revenge on the mind after last year the Cardinals went to Mount Pleasant and made it unpleasant against, the, against uh, Central Michigan, losing at home 31-17 in Ball State's best game of the season. And although the Chips have not won on the road this year, Ball State is still preparing as if they are facing the number one team. Let's hear from some of the players after practice this week. What are some things that you're stressing and the defense is stressing this week to prevent that big play from happening? Uh, you know, we just got to gotta worry about us. Play uh, sound football, uh, know our assignments, be disciplined, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, just make sure everybody's doing their job and uh, we're tackling well. It's usually when big plays happen, we miss tackles. Uh, I think the biggest thing with turnover is just playing fast and relentless. Uh, you know, we got a few at Ohio because we've been lacking so far this season, so it's always a big emphasis. But, yeah, to me, just playing fast and hard and you'll create turnovers that way. Uh, just the same stuff, you know, since day one. You know, get everyone get to the ball, get their hats on the ball, and, uh, you know, the guys coming in late, go for the ball and make sure you secure the tackle. You know, Sean's a great player, and we definitely, I think we've missed him, and uh, it'll be great to have him back. It feels great, you know, we work too hard as a team, you know, and it sucks missing time, but, uh, you know, it feels good to be back and we're ready to play. Well, guys, some of the keys for the upcoming game this weekend, obviously, if you look at the Central Michigan team, they've had a lot of plays that have been big plays, so it's kind of have to be a bend but don't break against this team because they'll, you know, they can lull you to sleep not playing well and all of a sudden they'll explode for random points. They've got a real good quarterback, running back, wide receiver uh, combo and that you wouldn't think they were 2-5 and five based on those three players. And it, it starts uh, up front with their quarterback, Ryan Radcliffe. He's got a big arm and when you give him time can make a lot of throws. And Paris Cotton, the tailback, he's a 
been a multiple time back in this system, multiple years in this system. He's very fast, but he can also shed off a couple defenders there and take some power with him. And Cody Wilson, the wide receiver, think of him more Brandon Stokely, uh, Wes Welker kind of player. Uh, but overall, it's all about giving Radcliffe that protection. And this is more in the case for him than any other quarterback uh, that I've seen for a while. He's a great quarterback when he has time to throw. You watch him make big time throws left and right like the one he made right there. But when you get pressure on him, which the Cardinals did last time, he turns into a completely different quarterback. Well, guys, this is a case of don't fix what isn't broken. Ball State went in with a team that uh, many think was worse than the team this year, and they absolutely destroyed Central Michigan by doing just that. They got pressure on Radcliffe. They forced him to make throws, and they played very good defense down the stretch. Robert Edens, of course, four and a half sacks in that game. Well, Ball State has a little bit of an advantage because Ohio, much like the Central Michigan team, they may be a little more experienced, but they live and die by the big play. He were there as die by the big play. You can't make those kind of uh, throws, make those kind of plays and put points on the board. Your offense is pretty much, you're, you're out of your element. So Ball State got to do what they did last year and uh, hopefully basically do what they did against Ohio and limit those big plays. And the Cardinals FDC right there, they've got to turn some, tur get some turnovers. Radcliffe tossing a lot of balls, lobbing them up there kind of as touch passes. If you're the Cardinals, you have to be getting those interceptions and, and fumbles, just like they did last game. They said You said from the sideline report, the coaches, every single time someone had the ball, they're yelling, rip the ball out there. So they got to win the turnover battle again. Well, the turnover battle's big, really, in any game. And it's maybe the biggest factor uh, when you watch football. But for the Cardinals, it's been the factor. They're 4-0 and on this season uh, when they win the turnover battle. And, not surprisingly, they're 0-3 when they lose it. And in those four wins, the Cardinals have not turned the ball over one time. An extremely impressive impressive uh, a stat and coach Lembo said he had teams at Elon Lehigh that won eight nine games that didn't even go uh, four games without turning the ball over and and you look at the way they got those turnovers defensively against Elon or excuse me against Ohio uh, th those three turnovers really in clutch points in the game it's not so much I think that you get the turnovers, it's when you get them. And the Cardinals got three really big ones last week. And they take that momentum into the next game. This is a Ball State defense that really struggled to turn the ball over. Coach Parrot, or Coach Lembo always saying that uh, his defense needs to step up and uh, create more turnovers. They finally did that at a timely uh, manner, like you said, Pat. But this is another case. They got to get to the quarterback. Radcliffe already has 11 interceptions on the year in Ball State. This might be the healthiest secondary we've seen so far this year. Baker's coming back. You got Howard playing well. Uh, Dehaney and uh, Garrett and Pinkston, they're all playing well. So Ball State, they got the advantage right now. They just got to they got to get the ball. Let's talk about Ball State's quarterback, Keith Wynn, and obviously coming off a couple of rough games. Didn't throw any interceptions. It was pretty windy, uh, so it was going to be a difficult game regardless, but no interceptions, starting to build that confidence back up. Where do you guys see him right now in his rebuilding process after those two bad games? Well, he faced the two toughest teams on defense he's going to face all year, and they scored just six points in those games, and that's really indicative of the defensive play. The big thing you pointed out, the no interceptions against Ohio, I think that's really important to get his confidence back. And while he didn't blow the world away, it was also pretty crazy wins uh, up there in Athens, so it was tough to get a passing game going. But for me, I think it's important that the Cardinals take what the defense gives them. Yeah, it'd be nice to see Keith Wenning throwing the ball all around like, they did, like he did against Army throughout these entire five games left in the season. But if they're going to give Juwan Edwards you know, holes to run and the offensive line's going to be able to open them up, there absolutely is no reason uh, wrong with giving Juwan Edwards 25-30 and the running backs 30-35 total carries if that's what's going to work. You have to do what the defense is going to give you and not just necessarily force the pass. Well, it's a total team effort, as you said. I mean, Keith Wenning, he didn't put up gaudy numbers, but at the same time, he helped out his running game. You know, you, your quarterback's throwing well and he's converting when you need him to that that keeps the defense honest. They have to go back and uh, defend the pass. Then that opens up holes for Juwan Edwards, Barrington Scott, Dwayne Donegan. This is a whole team effort. Even though Keith Wenning doesn't have a great game, Juwan Edwards does have a great game. Or another player steps up and has a great game. So Keith Wenning, but the big thing with him is that he didn't throw any interceptions. And with the young quarterback, Wenning, he does get rattled a lot. No interceptions, confidence going into the next game. Well, as always, player to watch. Who do you guys have this week as a player to watch? Uh, Pat, you go ahead and go first. Yeah, for me, it's a player coming back after two weeks uh, being off, and that's Sean Baker, you know, probably the best overall football player that the Cardinals have at safety, and, and he's really a playmaker. Coach Lembo talks about needing those playmakers on defense. That's exactly what Sean uh, Baker is and probably headed to the NFL next season. And, but when he's in there, he's a fourth linebacker at times, and he's a guy who's a threat to intercept any pass, and Radcliffe has shown 
Brown, you know, he has some susceptibility when you get pressure on him. You can get an INT or two, him to make a mistake. I really think we're going to see a big game from Sean Baker, and uh, hopefully he's out there playing with reckless abandon, abandon like we're used to seeing him play. I got to go with Aaron Morris, uh, the safety who dropped down the linebacker, having a very good season, uh, kind of a silent season. Not a lot of people seeing him, but his speed and athleticism is really going to come into uh, play here against a uh, running back like Paris Cotton who could drag you for five yards and burst out the backfield for a 50-yard gain. So Morris is going to have to play real well, use every tool to his advantage against Cotton. I don't have a specific player. I'm going to have to go with the offensive line. It's almost cheating, but I think the offensive line has been so key. Uh, besides the turnovers uh, in their wins, they've been absolutely dominating the line of scrimmage. Uh, you look especially with the IU game and the Army game, uh, Ball State offensive line completely dominated the game, which helped out the offense uh, to their, you know, their highest scores of the year. Uh, so I think it's going to be the offensive line, and they've done a good job. They've had all their starters have been nicked uh, and banged up all season long. So I think uh, they're going to be sticking together strong, uh, and they're going to have to be the, the, the guys to really uh, will this team on to win in the end. Well, that's our show for this week, but don't forget to watch the show every Thursday at 3 online. Also, WIPB, Comcast, and Fox College Sports. Also, follow us on Twitter at Third Down Chirp and at BSU SportsLink. Remember, if you can't make it to the game, listen live to SportsLink Radio on 91.3 and WCRD.net. Chris Rankle and Pat Boylan, I'm Kyle Binder. Thanks for watching again. We'll see you next week. Thank you.